So, um, if, without further ado, for those of you who don't know uh, Tinashe, like I said, he's got a world of knowledge around digital. Please do follow him on all social media platforms. So, just a brief history with between me and him. When he when I started off uh, on digital media. I was looking at his account, account because his account on Twitter was one of the bigger ones in Zimbabwe. So I, I kept on reaching out and I was like, man, how do you grow it? And he gave me one or two tips, which until today have helped me kind of grow to where I, where I am and I'm still growing. I'm not where I want to be, but I think that he does have um, just so much knowledge that I, 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 I don't think should be kept to himself, but I think it should be shared with everyone. So Tinashe, without further ado, I think you can, you can take over from here. Right. Um, good morning, everyone. I hope my internet is stable. Can you guys hear me? Right. Fantastic. If you guys can hear me, then I'm really, really excited. Um, I thank you very much, um, Samantha, Miss Red, uh, for coming through. Um, for me, it's very, very exciting. It's such an honor to be on this platform. Tinasha, we can't hear you. Are you still there? We cannot hear Tinashe's sound. Okay, so I think he's just gonna try and uh, reconnect with the sound. Uh, I couldn't hear his sound. So we're also waiting for him to just reconnect. I just wanted to remind everyone, uh, if you can take some notes and then I think we will have a question and answer session whereby we'll just try as, as, as much as possible to just get, just in case you didn't un uh, understand something. It's always good to just say, guys, I didn't understand Fakati Fakati. And then from there, I think we can um, ask our speakers to just help guide us and get us to a place where we can um, have more understanding. Because I think with, with, with learning, it's not just about being given information, but it's also questioning information and finding ways to make the information work for you. So you obviously ha have to um, ask questions and you, you don't learn if you're not asking questions. So feel free. Uh, to do so, yeah. Um, I don't know if Tinash is back with us now. Um, I think he's connecting again. Okay. We are just waiting for Tinash to come back on, and then he can continue. But I think okay. Whilst we're waiting for Tinash to come on, we can actually just go ahead. And uh, Philip, I don't know if you're if you're able to just if we can start now. So for the sake of time. Sure, I, I, I can. Okay, uh, All right. So, uh, welcome everyone and uh, many thanks to Miss Red for the opportunity to just share. I've joined as well. Uh, thank you for, <laughs> for, for joining in. So, uh, today we'll be talking about uh, branding and uh, last week we talked about what a brand is, right? And we have a, a, a definition that a brand is really a gut feeling or a perception that people have about a product, about a service, um, and it's not limited to just that. And so to just develop the discussion about brands we then look we'll go on to look at um what really constitutes a brand if we are saying it's a gut feeling and it's a perception what then how how do we then understand what it is because things that are not tangible are really difficult to understand so to understand what a brand is we need to start thinking of it as a more like a story because all brands or all products or anything that we consider a brand is a story it's either we are telling that story to ourselves or someone is coercing us to think about certain uh, uh, whether it's a product or whether it's a company in a certain way right what do i mean you can think of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. we can think of um, Apple, for example. They coerce us to think of them as a company that's there for simplicity. It stands for creativity. It stands for um, thinking differently. 
that's the story that they are telling us to think. So they, uh, when a brand is successful, we become loyal to that story. That's why there is brand loyalty. It's people being loyal to a story that's being told about a product or a service. I don't know if you understood that. If you have questions, let me know about that. So brands are stories that we either tell people or that other companies coerce us to think of or to um, sort of like memorize within us. Um, I, I can give an example as well for, let's say, if you hear of um, Paris, what do you think of? I think I'm asking, of the Eiffel I know Tower. Exactly. Yeah. And French kissing. You think of love, you think of traveling, you think of the Eiffel Tower. That's not a coincidence. That's a story that uh, France is telling the world. And we believe in that story so much that most people want to go to Paris and to, to, to see the Eiffel Tower. So that's really um, what I mean when we say that, yeah, there is a story. Or if you think of history, right? You can't talk of uh, Zimbabwean history without talking about uh, our great Zimbabwe. It's a story, right? We are, we are trying to, to, to tell a story about building brands, right? And everyone will understand certain things. I'm, I'm trying in a friendly way to coerce you to understand the story about brands. So whether you are selling a product, whether you are uh, buying a product, know that someone is telling you a story that you are willing to pay for or you are willing to listen to. And what happens to stories? You can either be an audience to a story or you can reject it, right? It's not always that yeah, you hear a story and you are interested in hearing it. Because stories have all forms of, um, um, they are different, they are different in forms, right? Um, they are stories, let's say they are horror stories. I'm not a fan of horror. <laughs> I'm more in the, <laughs> in the, um, in the comic side of stories when it comes to, to, to movies, right? So I reject the horror stories and I, I accept the comic stories when it comes to movies. Uh, I can give another example that might be familiar with us. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, we would read Shona novels. Uh, did anyone read, uh, let's say, Tambaoga or um, uh, what, what, what were the others? Anakarikoga, Gumirem Sere. I would pose a question because I thought about this. I would pose a question, Kuti. What makes that story different from, let's say, uh, Black Panther? Right? Because you have almost the same characters, someone who is fighting and they go to battle with, uh, with uh, and they have uh, uh, someone who is, uh, who is uh, trying to, to, to demotivate them. Uh, you have brothers that are jealous and trying to fight. So those are, it's the, we, you can pretty much come up with a Black Panther movie based on Tamba Oga, for example, right? But the difference is there is someone who has millions of dollars and believe in, in the Black Panther movie or story rather than the Tambaonga story. So if you and I had 
million dollar <laughs> million dollars we we can pretty much believe in our tambaoga story and produce a movie that we can let the world watch right and believe with us so, so that's pretty much you can think of the branding exactly it's about investing in in a story I will talk about brands and stories because it's much easier to understand. Mm -hmm. So you can think of uh, a movie or uh, a, a music, a piece of music, right? It's a story. It then becomes, uh, let's say a movie, because movies are well marketed and branded, right? They become brands. You, If you talk of Marvel, uh, the world of, the marvel <laughs> comics and all that that's a brand and it's a catalog of stories literally right that are being told fictional stories right uh to such an extent that they have managed to coerce the world into believing the stories right and investing in 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 it i can pretty much say that if tomorrow a batman uh, movie comes out, everyone might be willing to pay for a ticket to watch it because you are believing in the story, right? So same with um, whether any product, whether it's um, uh, um, a Sony headset, right? They have a story that they are trying to tell with whether it's colors, whether it's the form. It's a story, basically the engineers that set down to create this headpiece right there is a story that they were trying to tell using colors using materials whether they want you to believe that it's cheap or expensive right it's a story so when we are building companies or when we are building brands you have to start to think of what story am i telling the world what story am I telling to the world through whatever I'm making, right? So it's important to, to really be into st storytelling and uh, understanding that whatever you are producing, you are writing a narrative that you want someone to listen to. Are there any questions so far? from anyone. Sorry, so if I, could, oh, if I could summarize, so you're basically saying one, brand story is important, right? So you must understand what your brand story is. Nations, places, or, um, or what else? Animals, they all have a story that we believe in, right? So, I, I am not sure if you remember, um, I think in the 90s, there was a, a goat that would literally go everywhere where the president, president of Zimbabwe would be speaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, uh, and there was a saying that I would remain the Mbuzie government, right? It became a brand on its own. And Wait, it's actually a real story in Mbuzie government? Yes. Oh, wow. There used to be a god, yeah, that that used to parade, and yeah, uh, I don't know uh, if other people remember that. Hmm. Yes, we do. Yeah, it it was really like a a, a brand in, during that time because, yeah, it 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 was just something that was yeah <laughs> different, right? So, and even in the world here in Germany, where I live in there is a dog that has an estate worthy more than it's in millions one of the it's one of the richest animals in the world it's protected it has guards and uh people actually inherit from it so animals can also be brands not 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 in the rich sense you can think of uh if you know if you knew uh Karl Lagerfeld, who recently died, he had a cat, and his cat was is a brand.
because they are t-shirts with just that uh that cat's face which cost a fortune right so brands come in all forms right it's not only limited to products but even places like what we were mentioning uh paris is a brand right if you think of romance and in all movies you know when they want to talk about a romantic scene or a, a romantic getaway they will associate that with paris then paris has become a, a brand in that aspect and you have people who become brands right for example miss red is a is, is a brand in in in, in the in the Zimbabwean context. And you can think of, uh, for example, the Queen of England. She's a brand and their family is a brand. So much that if anything happens to them, you, you, it's, it's in the news, right? Because if you think of it, why should we care that, yeah, well, um, someone is getting married. Why should the whole world stop what's it, what it's doing and pay attention to that? But no, Rorana, Zimbabwe, is anyone paying attention? It's because that hasn't been tailored, made to be a brand, but their family has been made to be a brand. And that's how they make money. The Queen of England, she, she's a brand and um, they sell things and that's how they make money because they have managed to build up a brand, a royal brand, right? And so they, they, brand, sell things, brands, they sell, a, they sell um, an idea, they sell a way of life, they sell monarchy, yes? Yes, that's the story that they are selling to us. Okay. And everyone who is willing to listen to that story will invest in it. So that's what's important for us to understand today that all brands are stories that we are willing to either listen to or to tell to the world or to coerce someone into listening to it. Okay. Right. So if I'm going to and ask you today... The, to mm -hmm. maybe give us homework because obviously mm -hmm. you said it's a it's an ongoing process it's not a once-off webinar so if we were to to get homework from you today philip what would that homework be for everyone because i'm seeing different people and different brands because i see uh munya uh who's a brand he works with apple products and he's he, he's got his i help team and i'm seeing panache also has be heard is also here and they've got teams if they were to get homework for today to go and work on so that on the mm -hmm. next webinar we come back and maybe we go through some of these things that you have mentioned to us what would that be okay so if if you have on a company or if you own a product the question that i would pose to you is what's your brand story or what's the story behind uh you as a brand right or as a company or as a product what's the story that you're trying to tell the world can you summarize it in a sentence so for example for me i i believe myself to be a mere midwife that helps people to bring in the birth ideas into the world that's my story okay can, right. I, can, can, I, can, you, I ask, can I ask someone else? There's someone else that I'm seeing right now who's here. Uh, Munya Edison, if you can just help us because you, you're one person that I know who's got a, a company that's functional. Okay, sure. What would, what would he say his brand story is, if that's okay with you, Philip, if we can interject? Munya, are you there? Sorry, uh, uh, the, the, the connection was bad. I didn't clearly get that. Oh, I was trying to get Munya to, 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 to just give us his brand story since he's one. I'm looking at the participant and, and he's one of the guys that I know actually has a functional brand. Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. 
Could you just share with us? I don't know if you know your brand story. My, my brand story derived from the passion that uh, to give people, you know, uh, assistance, uh, either software or hardware uh, about an Apple products. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That sounds great. So uh, that's to be the homework too. And also, you might, if you don't have a company or if you don't have a brand, a product or a brand, um, think of the products that you use or any gadget or any, uh, any article that you, you have within your, within your vicinity and think of the story that they are trying to tell to you through their product, right? If you go to, to for example, those who, who drive Mercedes Benz, they they have their motto, and usually the motto engraves um, uh, is derived from the story that they are trying to tell the world. So, for example, Nike, just do it, right? That's a story. That's a story mm -hmm. that they are trying to to. Uh, the to tell the world. The lifestyle. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So think of all the products that you are using and think of the story that they are trying to tell you. Because if you start thinking of sto uh, brands as stories, then you can pretty much create your own story and tell the world. Okay. So in India, you usually do this unconsciously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've written my notes. So our, our, yeah. our big homework from you for this, this, this webinar is what's your brand story, right? So everyone who, who if, if we can ask everyone that, and I think I'm going to also just push that question uh, on the Red Market Sunday platform so that everyone can just come back and just uh, give us responses for that. So that it's a, it, it's a two-way conversation rather than just us being given information without necessarily having, you know, learning spaces. So um, thank you so much to Philip for that one. Um, so I'm just gonna just write this down so that we don't True. forget. Philip's homework is what's your brand story? Think of other brands um, and their stories, right? And their stories. Yes. Okay. Try to, uh, to derive the, the story that other brands are telling you, uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Philip, for that one. So for those of you uh, who went with us on the first one, uh, Philip is a branding guru. So he works uh, for, in Germany, Philip Branding. You can look for him on all social media platforms. Please do follow him. He's a very free person. If you have any questions, if you may need any extra additional things, he's your guy. But also he's got a website which you must, must, must go on, log on. So Philip, what, what's the website again? So it's philbranding dot com uh p h i l branding b r a n d i n g dot com um yeah no branding i'll be updating it this coming weeks and yeah just be uh logged on and yeah you will see some interesting things there all right so this is our resident uh branding business development guru right there philip thank you so much uh so we're gonna go to uh tinashe now um i think he's back on and just start to talk about digital and the future of it because obviously we're talking about branding which is the fundamental of what we need to do once we've understood how to brand ourselves and once we've branded ourselves well you look good the internet they're liking how you're looking there is a guy called Tinashe who comes into your space and says, guys, I'm going to give you an invoice of 500,000. I'm going to make your digital look amazing. But that's when you're now in an advanced brand. But uh, we're speaking right now to the red market audience, which is your young startups, um, entrepreneurs who are just, you know, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. And we're trying to consolidate everything so that people can understand the power of digital in the absence of a big budget. But if you do have a big budget, trust and believe, if you give Tinashe your money, he'll do amazing things. But anyway, Tinashe, this one is for you. Um, right. Thank you very much. 
this raid, uh, uh, Philip, uh, Philip. Okay. It, it was, was really, really, really exciting. exciting. Um, just give me a moment. I have two computers um, uh, running in case, you know, one of it loses connectivity and so on. Um, right. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed every bit of what Philip was saying and, um, and, and also from that, um, you know, um, contribution, was it from, uh, was it Nigel? Uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's very, very good engagement. So today, my, my job is very, very simple. Um, you know, for me, digital is very, very exciting. Um, I don't see digital for me as a job, but for me, digital is a way of life. And I think it needs to be like that for, for everyone. Uh, the reason why I'm saying so is, um, you know, digital has um, become intertwined and interwoven into the daily fabric of our lives. You know, um, you everything. That we do now is some form of digital um, in it. For instance, right now I can, you know, like my son, uh, you know, when he's doing his homework, he can say to Google, um, you know, you know that Google uh, Home Kit, uh, Google, um, you know, what is five plus five, uh, you know, and he gets the answer, isn't it? So what what it means is that even the way we function, the way, you know, is actually quite different now because there's no need for you to education has to be very different, you know, and every, how we need to approach our lives, it has to be different, you know. For me, um, I think everything should change, including our education. I think education has to change. Uh, why do I say so? Uh, because you find a lot of professionals, a lot of companies, I mean, investing in, um, you know, like degrees and stuff like that. I'm not saying don't go and get your degree. Personally, I have uh, an undergrad and I have an MBA. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, I've never used my MBA to get a job when I was still formally employed, you know, and no one really cared that I had an MBA, isn't it? But, you know, now that I run my own business, um, I use my MBA for, uh, you know, for running the business. So every other learning that you have to do right now should be about, you know, the things that you can do, things that you can implement and, and stuff like that. And you know, for me, that is what digital, um, you know, is all about, you know, using, uh, uh, acquiring the skills that you really, really need to use. Uh, but I digress. Let me actually, um, you know, start to talk about, you know, why we're here and stuff like that. But I just thought, you know, it's very, very important. Now, uh, there, there are a number of, um, um, you know, Ms. Reid just asked me to talk about, you know, the future of, um, of uh, branding and future of digital. I think that the very first thing, um, you know, uh, that we're going to see, I mean, this is the biggest trend that is coming, you know, 2021 going, um, you know, um, you know, further. It's um, artificial intelligence. You know, artificial intelligence is upon us. Uh, for good or for worse, you know, we have seen those movies, you know, Terminator, you've seen even, um, you know, my favorite, which is The Matrix, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how many times I've watched The Matrix, but man, The Matrix is so, so good. Um, you know, they talk about, it's, it's about, it's, the theme is artificial intelligence, and that's where we, we're going, and I think Hollywood for some time is trying to prepare us for, for that which is coming, and I think it's, it's, it's ultimately a good thing, you know. Um, it, artificial intelligence is right there in our homes each and every day, you know, like I was talking about, you know, using, uh, you know, Alexa, using uh, Google HomeKit and so on, you know, that's artificial intelligence um, for us. So as a, as a business, you have to ask yourself, how am I positioned to take advantage of this shift? Um, you know, with, with the coming of artificial intelligence, it also means that there are certain things like your uh, machine learning, like your, um, your, your chatbots. Uh, more and more, uh, you know, businesses are adopting chatbots. Uh, you know, I run social me. For social me, we also build chatbots for, for companies, isn't it? Even though right now, I mean, like right now, I mean, it costs us money to build those chatbots. Even if, you know, even if you do an MVP, uh, a minimum viable product, and you take it to a company and say, you know, guys, this is what you can do and so on. Not a lot of businesses right now, I'll tell you. Uh, are very receptive to that, you know. But we know, I mean, um, come two a year, two years from now, those businesses will be coming to us um, and would then, you know, charge them an arm and leg, you know, because 
when we were, you want to say something, please go ahead. I wanted to ask, um, sorry to interject, but see a, a chatbot, what does it do for, for, for a business? Like, is it like, does it cut down the, 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 the interaction with, I, I don't know, what, what, does it, what, what does a chatbot actually do for those who don't even so, know? Okay, so a chatbot, uh, I'll just give you an example. Like, uh, let's say for instance, you may have, uh, I think one of the first companies to have a chatbot, I think was Stuart Bank. Um, and they called their um, chatbots, I can't really remember the names. Kash, these Kash, companies have- There's like a Shona name, I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a Shona name. I mean, most of them, they have uh, Shona names. I think now FBC have- uh, Batsy. Uh, as, uh, Batsy. Oh yeah, it's Batsy, yes. yes. You know. And that was so beautiful, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <As> well. <laughs> um, so, you know, with Batsy, you know, the whole idea is they want to make it more, you know, because you can't be having, uh, you know, like more personnel to attend to customer queries and stuff like that. So if you have, if you can automate the process, one, it saves on costs. Two, it also uh, improves the CX, you know, the customer experience for, um, you know, for, for, for customers and so on, you know, rather than wait for five, five minutes or up to an hour, even a day before getting a response with an automated chatbot, uh, you quickly get that response there and there. And I think it's very, very good. Now, now what you see now is that, it, um, you know, but was probably one of the very first iterations of uh, chatbots, but chatbots are becoming more and more um, intelligent now. You know, you can actually have a conversation, you know, and, you know, the more like right now, chat, like even for social media, the chatbots that we're trying to, to build right now, uh, we want them to be more intuitive, you know, so that they can sort of like understand what someone is trying to say without actually saying, you know, press one or, uh, you know, press two and so on. But to then say, you know, they can sort of pick up, you know, if you, what the uh, customer is trying to say so, so that you improve, so that uh, it makes it, it, it makes it uh, the same like talking to another person, you know. And I think um, as businesses, you have to look for those solutions. You know, a big organization like Old Mutual can have a chatbot. If you're so that organization, like social media as well, you can also have a chatbot. So they, they, you know, digital is actually leveling the field. You know, it doesn't really matter, um, you know, how big you are, you know. But as long as you have the right tools, the right vision, and, and, and so on. So artificial intelligence for me is very, very exciting. Now, something also close to that, and which I think Google is trying to push, you know, for me, and I'll tell you this, if you're, if you're into business, Google has to be your friend. Um, the reason why I say this is, uh, is because, you know, with, with Google, um, it has a host of applications that are just there to support small businesses. Um, you know, when I start to talk about digital marketing, guys, you know what, for me, digital marketing, I, I just think in Zimbabwe, we are just barely scratching the surface. There's just so much. For us, digital can... marketing is post up a social paper, Facebook and per Twitter, yes. and that's it. Oh, yes. Hmm. And, and you know what, uh, you're very right, Samantha. And, you know, you hear clients then say, you know what, um, you know, today is Monday, it's Monday, so can we have a Monday motivation post? But what does the Monday motivation post help your business it doesn't you know not a lot of people even read you know your monday motivation post what you need to do is that you need to have um engaging um educative and entertaining content isn't it um you know but also again you also need to look at the bottom line to then say you know what um so i we are running a facebook campaign but how much money have is, is come out of this campaign it doesn't really make a lot of sense for you to have everyone talking about you and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, uh, your pockets are poor, isn't it? I mean, for me, that's just, you're just wasting. One chicken company, and I was very surprised. They're, they're probably like the loudest and, you know, they're really innovative with their advertising. But I, I was very surprised when I found out they've got one branch. And I was like, eh? With all that, Shavanuita, with all the, the you know, the noise they make online. It was very interesting to see that they only have one branch. I won't mention names. Yeah, I mean, I, it is. And you know, now that you mentioned that, I think now I can talk about that company. 
So I, I just want to know, personally, I'm not um, a customer for their, um, uh, for their product and stuff like that. But for me, one of the things that I want to, uh, to find out is I want to know how much uh, ROI, return on investment that they're getting from um, you know, the, their digital marketing activities. I mean, because for me, that's the most important metric. You know, the reason why marketing and digital marketing is not taken seriously in most organizations is when you're called up to present um, your results, you start talking about comments, you start talking about engagement, you start talking about number of likes and so on. But, um, and I'll tell you, you know, people in finance, you know, the owner of the company, they don't really care about all of those things. What they want is how much money has come into the business. And, you know, when you do a campaign, I mean, that should be your main, main um, goal. Of course, um, you, you, maybe you might want to start off with brand awareness, then you talk about, um, you know, um, consideration, then from consideration, you talk about, uh, you know, uh, conversion and stuff like that. You know, not that we, 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 we talk about that, uh, allow me to just um, um, share with you this, um, okay, so, right, I, I think you guys can, um, can see what I have there. So, you know, in, in digital marketing, there's what we call funnel marketing. You know, as a business, you need to have like a set of, um, you know, uh, you need to have funnels, different funnels. You know, uh, you guys know what a funnel is. Uh, if you have ever, you know, when if you, <laughs> uh, you your car, I, I, of course, Mr. Reed, I don't expect you that, you know, that to happen to you. <laughs> you know, but what I'm trying to say is, you know, uh, in marketing, you want to have, you want to develop a sort of like a funnel where you're trying to use, you know, content that you're developing on, Twitter, YouTube, and all of that, you know, to bring in customers, or oh, these are not customers yet, these are leads that you're actually bringing in uh, into sort of like an ecosystem. You know, you look at companies like Apple and uh, Google and stuff, stuff like that. Apple is the best example. What they do, if you use an Apple product, um, you end up using most of their products. Instead of, you can't use an iPhone and an HP. You have to use an iPhone and a MacBook and then an iPod, uh, Apple Watch and so on. It's an ecosystem where they actually say, you know what, they're going to draw you in and um, they make you like, they start to upsell, cross-sell, you know, just making money, more money off you, isn't it? So that's the same thing that you want to do. You know, you want to start to generate content on, on Twitter, content on Facebook. Then you are, it's for brand awareness where you're bringing in, um, you know, uh, people into uh, your funnel. So the goal here is to bring people into your ecosystem. You're, you're, you focus on generating awareness first, you know. Once you have them as leads, I'll give you an example. Um, let's say, for instance, we do a campaign for a certain company. What we do is that we have, uh, we create uh, visuals, you know, could be graphics, could be videos, you know, with a specific message. The whole message there is to make sure that people convert. And, you know, what we mean by convert is we want to get their telephone numbers. We want to get their email addresses. Why is that important? Because when you get their email addresses, you can now start to do what I call drip email, um, drip email uh, marketing system, where you are now saying, you know what, you, you're going to start to send them a series of emails. Uh, the whole idea is to make them, uh, you know, slowly convert. You know, I mean, it's like it's the same. I mean, like, let's say, for instance, if there's a... For those who are not married, uh, let's say if you want a certain lady and so on, you focus on first getting a number, isn't it? Then when you get a number, you say, Hi, so you, are you on app? And she says, yes. Then you start, you don't just go and say, you know what, I want to marry you, isn't it? You start saying, you know what, uh, you know, what are you doing, you know, and, and stuff like that. Then from there, uh, can we go for lunch and stuff like that, isn't it? Until you get to where you want to go, isn't it? It's the same thing. This is what digital marketing is. Now, you can't just be generating content for the sake of generating content. Now, um, just allow me, I just need to go back and, um, right. Um, so what you wanna do is, as an organization, you want to, number one, sorry, I'm just driving into digital marketing right now. Um, so 
what a lot of people do on social media is that they focus more on tactics rather than strategy. You know, when you talk about the difference between tactics and strategy, I'll probably use the, the analogy of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, please go ahead. Is that a question? No, my team is watching. Okay. So I was just trying saying. To highlight, <laughs> strategy, not just tactics. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. So, you know, with strategy, what you're trying to do is, um, you know, like Alice in Wonderland, that's a whole story. You know, Alice was walking in Wonderland and she came to an intersection. And when she was at an intersection, she didn't know which way to go. She took right or to go left. Fortunately, there was a cat that was there, if you guys still remember. And she asked the cat, um, so cat, which way should I go? And the cat was like, uh, Alice, it really depends with where you want to go. And uh, then Alice was like, um, you know what, to be honest, I don't really know where I want to go. The cat then responded, then it doesn't matter which way you, you go. And I think that's what a lot of businesses do. You know, they focus more on, they don't really know where they want to go. So each way, you know, if, to, if the, you know, today is, um, uh, you know, uh, 16 days of gender uh, violence, you know, they are, they're onto that. I'm not saying it's not, it's a really good campaign, but uh, you're just hopping onto things, isn't it? Is it aligned to your brand, you know, and so on. So you just don't, you need to pick, you know, if, if it's, um, you know, those uh, um, hashtags and, you know, things which are going viral, you really need to choose a certain um, path, you know, that is aligned to your business. You really need to have, um, you know, a strategy. So strategy for me is more long term. You now say, you know what, so as an organization, what are objectives? So for a lot of organizations, their main objective is to then say, we want to grow revenue. So that becomes, you know, for your digital marketing plan to then say, you know what, so for the next uh, year or, you know, for 2021, we want to grow our revenue. You want to align our digital marketing campaign to our organization's, um, you know, uh, objective of, growing our revenue to maybe 1 million US, United States dollars. So you then break it down into, into goals. You know, goals, goals are smart, you know, uh, they give you direction, you know, and also because they, you know, goals are smart, they're specific, measurable, attainable, result oriented and timely. So, you know, they allow you to measure, they allow you to see what needs to be tracked, uh, what needs to be measured, analyzed and why. And when you have that, uh, when you're operating from 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 that side, you can actually then start now to then say, you know, what, uh, our activities, our tactics working, uh, because now from there, you are now saying, um, you know what? So we put, we, we have we we have, we have this Facebook campaign, but this Facebook campaign really give us the results that we want. Why? Why did it not give us the results that we want? What do we need to change? And with digital marketing, everything can be measured. You can measure the people actually clicking on different parts of your website. You know, uh, if someone are people viewing our videos that we've uploaded on, on our website, are people finding you know the stuff that they want on our website? You know, for me, um, your website should be your main point, so your, 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 your hub for your marketing effort. You can't tell me that you are only doing Facebook, Twitter, and you don't, you're not directing people to your Facebook, uh, to your uh, website, because on your website is that way you get, um, that's where you, 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 you have your products, you have your services and so on. So you want people to get familiar with that, isn't it? And you want to drive the right people. You know what, I, I, I risk, um, you know, talking a lot. So. I really do want, I really, maybe let me go back to the future of digital uh, because the stuff that I now talking about, I think I need to invoice someone. <laughs> Send us the invoice. So, uh, <laughs> so um, I mean, there, there are a lot of exciting um, uh, stuff. I mean, just, I just want to be able to um to go back to the main how do you go back to the main screen oh there it is all right yeah fantastic so so you know like when you approach and start to talk digital like that i mean it really changes a lot of 
you know, your, uh, your strategy really changes the way you approach it. So, you know, with my team, even when we are uh, uh, doing a pitch to, a different, to, a, to companies and so on, uh, most of our um, uh, time, we spend it like 80%. So, you know, in business, they, they have that 80-20% uh, Pareto principle, isn't it? And I think we use that quite a lot because 80% of the work that we do, we actually use it on trying to educate customers. Do you know what I mean? Trying to educate them that, you know what, guys, the way you understand digital is, um, is very, very uh, different to, to what, how we, we, we look at digital and stuff like that. So that's the same thing that to, um, to approach digital. I mean, when you hire a consultant, when you hire an expert, try to make sure that you also give them, um, you also give them, uh, you know, leeway to improve your business. Because I think experts are experts for a reason. You know, they understand digital and, and stuff like that. Now, another thing, another trend that, which is not really a trend, but I think, you know, businesses need to focus on um, is, is video. Uh, over 90% of the content that people watch online is, is video. You know, when Jim, um, when Pop10 and all of those guys, when, you know, even mid-tire artists and so on, when they launch a video on YouTube within, uh, within an hour or so, it already has 20,000 viewers. And I mean, 20,000 is a lot. So you can't say that people don't have data, you know, so we can't put out video. You know, it just, you know, the reason why your video is probably not getting uh, enough uh, traction is probably because it's boring and uh, it doesn't have creativity and stuff like that. But if you do creative content, uh, you know, people will flock to it, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm, I like, you know, graphics and stuff like that, but I don't think they are now very, um, uh, you know, very effective because there's so much, there's only so much information that you can put out on a graphic, isn't it? But what if you do a motion graphic? What, do you, what if you do a video and stuff like that? Um, you know, those are some of the things that you can do. I mean, like, Mr. if you allow me, uh, I can just show you a video that we did for one of our clients. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Now, and I'll tell you this. Um, that video for us, um, and for them, it probably resulted in them getting a lot of traction, a lot of customers and stuff like that. You know, their whole campaign, you know, uh, you know, was sort of like, um, uh, you know, I mean, like it's sort of the, the video taught the whole story of the campaign that they wanted, you know. And the exciting thing with video is that, you know, even just as a video, you can now put it on TV, on ZDC, you can now put it on uh, YouTube. You can put it on Twitter, you can put it on Facebook and so on. And with, from just one video, you can actually start to break it down into smaller videos and stuff like that and prolonging a campaign and stuff like that. I mean, but actually, whilst, whilst, whilst we're waiting for the video to come up, it's, it's interesting that, that you're talking about video because um, we do like attention span for radio. So obviously, we have to look into how long it takes until someone switches off. So um, in terms of attention span, according to a study mm -hmm. by Microsoft, the average human being now has an attention span of eight seconds. So if you don't capture their mind within eight seconds, that is it. And I think video is pretty much the best way to do so. It's very, very important. So video is one of those also, I mean, like you say, um, you want to have that as, um, you know, as in as part of your repertoire, you know, as a business. The other thing which I think is also exciting is um, uh, a voice search. Voice search. Is Nashi still there? Okay, I think, we, uh, I think we lost him. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but uh, just waiting for him to, to, to come back. I think there's so many notes which are important in everything that he says. And, you know, he touched on some pertinent issues. I think, first of all, he, he spoke about AI being one of the biggest things or biggest trends that we need to be looking out for. And I think he is right by saying that in Zimbabwe, we've barely scratched the surface, especially as um, even the bigger, the bigger corporates. I don't even think they've even started to really uh, get in there. Are you back? I, I, I misread. Okay. I think we lost you a little bit. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. 
Hello? Hello? We can hear you tonight. You are audible. Okay, okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, you know, I just had uh, my other laptop has just run out of power. Apologies uh, for that, but I just had another one, um, you know, um, lined up. <laughs> no, I don't so, like it. You know what? Um, so I was talking about voice. <laughs> so I was talking about voice search, you know, and, um, you know, for me, so I've, I've just switched off my video. I think my internet is not very stable here. So, um, and that's yeah so um i was just saying um you know with voice search is very very important and i think a lot of businesses also need to take advantage of that um what am i saying um you know with with like when you go on google and you type in certain certain things like you know what maybe you want to buy a car you say you know uh, mercedes uh e and stuff like that um you know it will return to you some search results isn't it uh but now i think you know more in google is actually prioritizing voice search you know because a lot of people are now searching using their voice you know the same way you ask alexa you know google home kids to say you know what uh, i'm looking for this and that so what it means is that even for your search engine optimization uh, search engine optimization guys for those who don't know is that practice of um you know like when you go um on, on Google or on your website to try to make your website come up tops when certain keywords are um, entered into uh, Google or any search engine, isn't it? It's very, very important. Um, search engine optimization, because like right now, I mean, like not a lot of businesses invest in search engine optimization, but uh, it's actually one of those very important because when I'm, when I'm, when I'm looking for anything, you know, one of the first uh, port of calls is to go on Google and say, you know, Google, and you ask Google and, you know, you type in, you know, we, what is the best, um, you know, which, let's say you want to go for a vacation, you know, um, 10 beautiful vacation spots in Zimbabwe or, uh, you know, um, you know, the best place to go in Greece and then Greece, then Google says Santorini and you guys should go there and I want to go there, <laughs> you know, so, so search is very, very important, but now it's actually moving to, to voice as well, you know, so you want to be in that space uh, again. So uh, it's very, very important. Um, the other bit, uh, I think maybe the last thing that I'll probably talk about uh, is with, in terms of what you need to do with, um, uh, you know, your digital marketing is that you, I mean, for me, you influencer marketing is very, very important, you know, uh, I mean, you have uh, people who are now celebrities on social media, uh, you know, I mean, Miss Red is obviously one, um, you know, I've, when I was uh, at a certain company, I tried to get it to be, to influence, I mean, like, uh, but she didn't want, <laughs> but the whole idea is you want to use different influencers because they are so relatable to uh, your audience, you know, do you know what I mean? Um, you know, if let's say, for instance, uh, the red the market uh, Sunday, uh, you want to be able to um, to you want to be able to to uh, using that red market sign. I mean, like it's obviously a platform that Miss Red and their team they they manage. I mean, but for me, I'm actually looking at it as an opportunity for banks to to jump on. You know, um, look, uh, the red market Sunday has lots of um, you know small businesses smes and stuff like that uh is you know banks and these this is exactly the same target audience that banks are looking for so why not as a bank why not jump on onto that you get what i mean you get the drift um you know if it's someone who who does fitness and you know they are always exercising and stuff like that and i've seen i've seen uh, you know old mutual try to do this um, you know, I think one of, you know, I saw there's a certain uh, um, lady uh, on Twitter and social media called Fit Fitness Bay. Uh, and she, I think she's influencing for, uh, for Odd Misha, you know, because they always run, having these marathons and stuff like that. So, you know, as a brand as well, you want to find the right fit and you just don't want to put, you know, say maybe an artist and you just paste them onto a bit billboard you know find creative ways of you know so that you know that you know so that they are actually you don't want to take a fish out of water 
you want to be able to use them in that you know in the environment that they are most comfortable in and so on so i think influencer uh, influ influencer marketing is a really huge trend that you know, a lot of businesses and organizations, they need to, um, you know, to take advantage of. I mean, guys, uh, I think today I'll, I'll end here. Um, you know, I think for me, I can talk the whole day. <laughs> you but I think, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed this. I, I don't know if there are any questions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's, we, 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 we need to talk to you about money because it's a conversation you're about to get into. But I think what's all about because of money. It's like, I mean, I'm going to do this because I think people need to understand what you do and need to understand the importance of you guys' work when it comes to digital. So social me, is it on, it's, it's on every platform, right? They can find you. If someone wants to use you guys um, for any campaign. Um, so, so right now, what we've been trying to do is, I mean, we are developing our website um, because we, you know, I mean, our company is like a year old and I mean, this year has been phenomenal, to be honest, uh, the growth, you know, both personally and for the organization. What we've been trying to do is just to, to get more out there and talk, um, you know, and just do work, you know, because we wanted to... Um, to build that portfolio, you know, so that companies can actually then start to say, you know what, um, you know, when we approach a company and we showed them the board of the work, you know, for them, it becomes easier uh, for them to work with us. Mm -hmm. So we haven't been really aggressive in terms of marketing our, our business. And also because I've also personally been trying to set up systems so that when, you know, uh, the Red Market Sunday or any other company, you know, uh, comes to us and say, you know, we want, we want a campaign done. We want over promise and under deliver and stuff like that. But if you really, really want to do business with us, please get in touch with me uh, directly. Um, you know, I'm available on most platforms uh, except TikTok. Man, I really need to figure out that. Man, uh, even know, myself, media. I need to figure it out. I think I <laughs> ask my daughter to help me. But someone was also saying TikTok is, is a platform that we are underrating and mean to start looking at very, very much so. It's it's insane, you know. Yeah. TikTok is insane, you know. So I think even for businesses as well, you have to figure out how you can use it like that. Uh, but, you know, to be honest, um, please, if you really want to get in touch with um, the organization, with organization, please get, I think we can do stuff at uh, yeah, really low prices, reasonable. I mean, we're still starting, so you don't have a lot. Mm -hmm. And this is your time. I mean, I mean, yeah, especially when someone is still starting, don't want to be labor, and you can always be one of those clients with, ah, takatanga now, saka, you know. Exactly. Those. Yeah. yeah. No, but thank you so much, Nash. I yeah. think um, just, uh, just like I said in the beginning, um, a lot of my journey on digital has been inspired by you. And I think there's so much still to learn. So I'm going to have a big door uh, conversation with you about that invoice because yeah. I really love to get more <laughs> out of you for the yeah. people. Um, but thank you. I hope we'll get you on another one because I think the journey doesn't stop here. It's, it's a continuous one and people need yeah. to learn and grow yeah. because you spoke about so many things. I mean, you spoke about AI, you, talk about, you spoke, about, um, spoke about machine learning, uh, Google being your friend, um, understanding how uh, content can educate and entertain as well as allow conversions for a company. Um, the fact that uh, digital marketing isn't just posting on social media, my motivations, but there's more to it. You spoke about strategy, which I was happy about because a lot of people don't understand that there has to be a strategy. You can't just say, okay, that can go post and no, it doesn't work like that. There's a strategy that comes with that, as well as uh, the fact that you spoke about websites needing to be the hub of every company and then everything is directed outside of um, the, the website, but everything comes back in. Uh, all the information is found in one place, but people can also find um, you on the website, which is very important. And um, looking for expertise, people will actually understand what they're doing and not just hiring someone because, oh, I don't want to know what about Facebook. That's, that's not enough because obviously there's things like, um, there's things like understanding analytics, giving reports to, to, to the company, put how well have we done on social media and also calculating the conversions from that, which you would have used uh, from the tactics of uh, social media marketing as well as digital marketing. So there's so much more to learn. Video you spoke about being one of the biggest things that we need to be looking out for. So I'm going to really, really like do a lot of 
negotiating in the background so that the people can have uh, a little piece of this information from you. But thank you to everyone for joining us. I hope everyone learned something from this. A big thank you to Philip for always being with us. I think the story of branding could not be complete without him. So it's not just digital branding, but it's also branding, understanding that and merging it in with digital. So thank you to everyone. We're going to continue this. Um, my team, I think they're going to post this on um, the Facebook platform as well as the YouTube. So follow me on all those platforms. Follow both Philip and Tinashe on their platform so that you can just get to uh, understand who they are as well online. I think um, they post quite a lot. Philip's website, just remember, it's philipbranding.com. Be on it, ask questions, and feel free to also DM us if you have any other further questions. For the next one, we actually got homework for everybody um, who was listening when Philip was um, talking. So our homework from Philip was... Um, what's your brand story? So for the next one, we are going to be talking about the brand story. If there's anyone who's here who's got any questions before the gentlemen go, uh, I'd really appreciate for those people to just wave so that we can just get those questions out of the way. Anyone with any questions for both Philip and uh, Tinashe, please do uh, ask them now or forever hold your peace. Questions, anybody? <laughs> Uh, yes, I have more of like, I, I don't know, a request. I, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, clear. Oh, okay, so um, it's just my internet connection kept on going on and off. But I really very much like to thank you, uh, especially to Nasha, because that's when my, my internet connection was very good. So I really learned a lot and, you know, the brain telling a story and then um i i felt that maybe it's because i missed quite a huge part of the presentation but i felt that maybe you're focusing more on the business aspect uh on people like companies entrepreneurs and stuff like that when there are people like me that are really trying to build a brand and not really part of the like the business circles it's not that i'm trying to build a business or i'm a young entrepreneur i'm just a young woman who you know wants to change the world like in terms of humanitarian work feminism and things like that so uh, i my request is that in the next webinar uh, if you can be more inclusive to uh, people like us it would be really great but philip so uh, thank you so much i really learned a lot today and miss radio great host thanks a lot Thank you. Well, I, I guess that the reason why it was focused more on businesses and uh, and so forth is because it's 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 deriving from Red Market Sunday. So uh, I understand what you're saying, and I'm going to uh, to gentlemen, my two gentlemen, if we can, for the next one, just to help. I know personal branding is a very big topic that a lot of people may find to be difficult, but I think it can also you can also apply the same uh, methods. When, as an individual. So it's just about converting what we learn and, and, and applying it to the indi for the individual. But thank you so much for that one. I really do appreciate it. So for Philip and Tinashe, I'm going to ask you to also do some homework for yourself uh, so that one day maybe we can have uh, a webinar which is solely specific to branding individuals so that people can also learn from that aspect. Oh, all right, fantastic. I mean, that sounds good. Thank you very much, uh, is it Unica? I mean, that was like some really, really good feedback. Uh, thank you very much for, um, for that. Sure. Same here. Um, so m maybe, Miss Reid, I'm just noticing on the comment side, um, you know, someone is talking about, you know, uh, civil, so civil society organizations and stuff like that. You know, I think this is also another area it was also quite quite important i mean like of late we have more ngos and stuff like that i happen to um you know to have done to be doing quite a bit of work with ngos i mean that's where the, all the money is <laughs> these days <laughs> yeah so we, we definitely do need to, to do more uh is there any other questions before my gentlemen have to go any other questions from anyone so I'm going to ask a question on behalf of someone because I know they asked me earlier on. Um, Tinashe, is there a way to monitor um, social media outside of, I know there's an Akiho, but is there another application that can be used to monitor social media campaigns or whatever it is for us? For, for um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are a ton of... Um, 
um, tools that you can use, to be honest. Uh, it just depends on your budget, you know. Um, but, you know, the ones you could probably use, um, I think um, I used to use TweetDeck for, um, um, you know, yeah, TweetDeck is, is, is a really good one, especially if you can just put some keywords in certain streams and stuff like that. Maybe it's something that I can just show uh, instead of just telling uh, when we do get the the, um, the time. Uh, but, you know, the ultimate paid uh, tool for me is is Mot Water. And I remember in my last job before I started um, back on the entrepreneurial journey is that we used to use uh, Mot Water quite a lot. Mot you know, Water. Because, you know, you can... Yeah, melt water. Yeah. Okay. M E L T. Melt water. M E L. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. You yeah. know, melt water allows you to measure, to see, um, you know, every instance of where your brand name is is mentioned, and also it also allows you to, uh, you know, to measure the reach of influencers. If you're gonna use be using brand influencers, you know, you can actually sort of like see if you're getting any value from them and and stuff like that, which I think is very very important. You know, um, you know, I, I'm an, you know, I didn't, I, growing up, I didn't love numbers, um, but uh, I've just come to realize that you know you can't do with numbers. You know, so, I mean, you have to be able to measure and numbers, they tell a story, isn't it? So you need to be able to measure and see, I mean, before, uh, you know, renewing a contract for an influencer, I mean, you have to understand, you look at, you know, the sort of contribution that they are making to uh, your business or organization, um, you know, are they, is the campaign, was the campaign successful and stuff like that. So, I mean, like when we were getting a demo from uh, Milt Water guys, you know, uh, you know, they could actually t t sort of like show us, you know, what um, DJ Fresh, you know, when DJ Fresh tweeted, you know, uh, you know, the reach and all of that and, you know, that sort of thing, you know, which, which I think is very, very important, you know, and, 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 you know, for me, my biggest cry to organization is that they need to invest in digital marketing, mm -hmm. you know, because digital, I mean, like right now we're just doing child's play. Yeah. A lot of organizations and we say, ah, no, I mean, we're, we're doing digital. Yeah. So I think personally, I want to see more people learning more about digital marketing, even if they're not going to be the ones doing digital marketing, because you have to ask, you know, questions, you know, I mean, like when you ask questions from someone who knows their stuff, uh, it, you know, there's so much value that you get from that rather than just someone saying, ah, because their son or child, uh, you know, plays with Facebook, then they think, ah, you know, Facebook is easy. So why are you not posting about this and that? I mean, it doesn't fit into what we're trying to do. Yeah. All, all those sort of things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a rabbit hole that, you know, when I start talking about digital, I can just go on and on. Yeah, and you are right. We, we, we haven't even started in Zimbabwe. This is the reason why I always tell people that I can do something so basic, but someone will be like, wow, but it's like, actually, no, it's very basic. But because not a lot of people are doing it actually no one is really doing it the way it can be done you don't see that these are the gaps yeah uh you, you know what miss red i i also like the the format of um uh of your um you know the this this platform it's more engaging more it's not like people actually saying you know what uh let's have these guys you know sort of like lecture mm -hmm. us and stuff like that but everyone can contribute and and that sort of thing and i think that's really really great uh because conversation is um is really really important in terms of making people understand and you know and, and that sort of thing making things relevant to to people and stuff like that so mm -hmm. so I, yeah i mean thank you very much uh for this it's been uh you know a really really good platform Even and thank you for, for giving us your time i know tinashe specifically is a very busy person philip is also very busy but finding time to just teach us uh, i think it, it, it's amazing so i know uh unica was asking about the platforms he said a uh, tweet deck keynote and melt water so you can look for those ones and hopefully you can get some help but i think we need to wrap it up because yeah tinashe has got a family uh, philip has got a whole germany to be doing things in so um thank you gentlemen again and thank you to everyone who joined us so someone also asked when the next one is so we will advise when the next one is but i'm hoping very very soon um so i'll keep pushing the red market sunday team to actually just um 
get it done. But thank you again for joining us. And for those of you who don't know, I don't know how you'd have known about this if you don't follow me, but just tell others to follow me at I Am Red. Okay. I love you loads, guys. And that is the end of our Zoom. Till next time. Bye-bye.